All right, this uh, final video in the series for this unit on probability will be on uh, using what we call the fundamental counting principle. Uh, this is another uh, really helpful tool in mathematics whenever we're trying to determine the total possible outcomes for com compound events. As we learned earlier that compound events are um, more than one event happening, um, so we're trying to figure out how many total possible outcomes would happen. Um, and the fundamental counting principle says that the total possible outcomes of compound events is found by multiplying the number of outcomes for each event. So if I have three different events, I'm going to see how many outcomes I have for the first event, multiply that by how many outcomes I have for the second event, multiply that by how many outcomes I have for the third event. All right, And if I had more events, I'd keep on doing the same exact thing. All right, and that would give me the total possible outcomes I should have, and then I can list the outcomes separately, um, as we did in our, in our previous video on listing the possible outcomes. All right? For compound events. All right, so, but in this video, all we're trying to do is determine how many, not what are the outcomes. All right, let's go to some problems to see how this works. All right, you flip a coin, flipping a coin and spin the spinner. So those are two different events. How many outcomes are possible? Well, flipping a coin, how many outcomes do you have there? Two. It's heads or tails. And then how many outcomes do you have for spinning the spinner? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five different outcomes. So how many total possible outcomes do I have? Um... Well, it's 2 times 5, which is 10 possible outcomes, okay? And being precise, I wouldn't just write 10. I'd write 10 possible outcomes. All right, and then if I were asked, but this is not the task, um, if I were asked what are the outcomes, then I would look at the first event. What are the outcomes for the first event? Heads or tails? How many outcomes do I have for the next event? Five, so I draw five separate branches, and then I'd list them. Let's see, I have 8, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then I'd list them out. H hyphen H. H hyphen 8. H hyphen 4. H hyphen 5. H hyphen 6. H hyphen 7. Um, T hyphen 8. T hyphen 4. T hyphen 5. T hyphen 6. T hyphen 7. And those would be my outcomes. And if you can see, there are 10 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 possible outcomes. All right? Though this task is just determining how many, okay? Don't list them unless you're told to list the outcomes or ask what are the outcomes. All right, let's go to the next one. You pick a marble and you roll a die. All right? How many outcomes are possible? Well, look at the marble. This is your first event. How many outcomes? 1, 2, 3, 4. And look at your die. If you roll a die, there are six different sides. So you could land on six different sides. And whenever you're determining outcomes, you multiply. Because if you look at your, at your tree diagram, you'll see that you're actually just multiplying whatever you get here by that number. So 4 times 6 is 24. Answer is 24 possible outcomes. Notice how this... Fundamental counting principle helps us to get the answer very quickly as opposed to having to go through every single drawing to figure it out and then count later. It's a quick way, nice math tool to help us. All right, next, you do the next problem and see if you can, uh, see if you can do this on your own and come back when you have the answer. All right, you pick a marble and you roll a die. Those are two different events. How many outcomes are possible? All right, so whenever I see this, I'm using the fundamental counting principle as a tool. One, two, three, four, five for my first event of rolling a mar picking a marble and rolling a die. Outcomes are six. Five times six is 30. So I have 30 possible outcomes. And the last one doesn't involve any pictures, so we have to... Uh, we have to make sense of this problem as we go through and persevere in solving it. Hunter wants to buy a new pair of skates. All right. 
So far, nothing there. I just know Hunter wants to go shopping for some skates. He can buy speed skates, figure skates, or hockey skates. All right. A pair of skates can come in blue or silver and can be decorated with blue streaks or green clovers. How many different combinations can Hunter choose from? Well, first I have to figure out what are my different events here. Um, he can, Hunter wants to buy a new pair of skates. Yes, I know he wants to buy skates. Great. He can buy speed skates, figure skates, or hockey skates. So right here, I guess the, this first um, event is, is type of skate. And how many do I have? Speed skates, one. Figure skates, two. Hockey skates, three. So three different types of skates. Next event. A pair of skates can come in blue or silver. All right, so this is color. Blue is one, two is uh, silver. So two different colors. And can be decorated, so these are decorations, with blue streaks, one, or green clovers, two. All right, so I know that there are two different outcomes for decorations. How many different outcomes can Hunter choose from? I multiply. Three times two is six, times two is 12. So there are 12 different outcomes. Whenever you're asked how many different outcomes or how many possible uh, combinations uh, can happen, you will always use what we call the fundamental counting principle or the FCP. Okay? All right. Hope you add that to your toolbox. Bye-bye.